tonight on Gopher Football with Jerry Kill. Get the latest direct from defensive coordinator Tracy Clays. Game experience is the best way to practice. It's, it's just different than practice. Plus, get an exclusive preview of Brick by Brick, an all-access behind-the-scenes web series about your Golden Gophers. And Coach Clays prepares you for this weekend with a film breakdown of the San Jose State Spartans. What's so hard about this with the two linebackers is you put this guy on an island and if the back just sees him and makes a cut off that backer, we should be able to get some yardage. It's your weekly look inside Golden Gopher football and it starts right now. Welcome to the latest edition of Gopher Football with Jerry Kill. It's your weekly look inside the Golden Gopher Football Program, and I'm your host, Natalie Nias. Saturday's game against Western Illinois continued this season's theme of overcoming adversity. Quarterback Philip Nelson went down, but Mitch Leidner stepped in and carried the load as the Gophers improved to 3-0. The first half was a close back and forth affair, but in the end, the Gophers' strength and conditioning paid off. They wore out the Leathernecks, bullied their way into the end zone twice in the fourth quarter, and claimed a 17-point victory. To take us through all of Saturday's action, Mike Max joins Coach Clays in the Hall of Fame room. Thanks very much. The Gophers win against Western Illinois. Next up, San Jose State. Joining us, not Jerry Kill, but the defensive coordinator, Tracy Clays, who steps in in his stead from time to time. We've done this before, Coach. Sure, you know, this becomes almost uh, an automatic call, like I see on a football field. If Coach goes down, you guys move in on the field, off the field. Tell me about that. You know, say nobody likes to to have to go through the process. It, it, it's part of the of the epilepsy and. Uh, but the nice thing is just our kids handle it so great. The staff does. Uh, say our, our positions he defines very well and, and we're trained very good in what we do and just a smooth running motor. I mean, it really is. We'd all like him to be there, but we also know our job and what needs to be done if he's not there. And uh, so uh, I, I think by the way we handled the second half and the way the kids finish, I mean, I really think it showed how comfortable everybody is with the position for what we have to deal with. You're the defensive coordinator. We'll talk about the defense a bit later, but let's start with the offense specifically. Speaking of going down, Philip Nelson goes down with a hamstring injury. Mitch Leitner goes in, performs pretty well. Yeah, I really did well for the first time. And it's not like coming in a game late with the lead and where you're down by a bunch. I mean, the game and you know, we were behind had to be decided, struggling on offense. And uh, boy, he made some great decisions and managed the offense, uh, did what his strengths were. I mean, he took care of the football, made a couple big passes. He'll tell you he missed a couple also, but uh, that passing game, the game experience is the best way to practice. It's, it's just different than practice. And that's probably the one thing Phillip has on Mitch right now is all the game experience. And so uh, he made the checks he had to do, moved the offense, turned the ball over once down the goal line. You know, it, he's just running hard. You know, he's got to learn to protect it and all that, but he's just trying to get the extra yard down there and get the ball in the end zone, but uh, made up for it by the way that, that he handled the game towards the end. So uh, it was great to see. You're going to need two quarterbacks. You maybe know, three. Maybe I, I was three. thinking about this watching because of the, how many times right. running that read option. Right. And if they're going to let the quarterback run, right. there's a chance you might need three quarterbacks this season just because of the nature of the offense. There really is. And, and you know, so I think, you know, Philip and what we'll end up doing is uh, where you block the read a little bit more and just make it a true handoff and, and try to control some of that. So uh, we, we can control a little bit of that by game plan, but it's, it's not as effective as when you take what the defense gives you by not blocking somebody. Yep. I mean, and that's and so, the whole uh, idea, right? Exactly. It just balances things up. And so, uh, you know, now in our game plans, we'll have to be balanced and be more careful. The running game became a two-headed monster. Roderick Williams and David Cobb. Williams, again, I've long said when I see the profile of that young man that that, that is who you want to be in terms of somebody that will pound right. at the line of scrimmage and occasionally enough speed to break it. Right. No question. You know, those six, seven, eight-yard runs, I mean, they just take the heart out of the defense. I mean, they really do. It's And uh, and then, you know, both of those back so far when people have tried to tackle them, they've punished them. And, uh, 
you know, it's the first time since we've been here we have great competition at the running back spot. And there's there's three of them there, and, and they could play for any team in the Big Ten, and, and they all want to be on the field. So uh, that competition itself has been healthy and made all of them a lot, a lot better and allow us to do what we want to do on offense. Well, Donnell Kirkwood's one of them. Of course, he's healing from his, his right. own injury, hoping to have him back sooner than later. But David Cobb is the other one that stepped up, and he, he looks like a running back when he gets it. Hard to tell completely when you played Western Illinois the other day, but he looks like he's got a future here. Yeah, he really does. And you know, I thought he really played the best out at New Mexico State. He, he did yep. well carrying the ball and running it hard and physical. And, you know, both those kids, you know, you get a chance. They're just getting older. I mean, they're just being in sophomores, going into juniors. And and uh, so that mentality, I mean, to take that beating and or deliver the punishment, you know, it, it's hard to do that right out of high school. You know, there's a few of them that have it. But uh, that's why I think the more kids can redshirt and develop mentally as long as physically, the better team that will be. And those are kids that didn't get that opportunity. They got thrown in the fire right away. And so I think even through this year, you'll continue to see them get better and better. All right, we'll break it down in the film session, talk some defense a bit later in the show with Coach Clays. When we return, Mike Max will join Coach Clays in the film room to break down the top gopher plays from Saturday's game. But you know, I talk about Mitch Leitner being a great competitor, and I mean, that guy is hustling down the field, and he's going to be the first one to meet My him gosh, down there. My gosh, shows know. up at the pylon. And still to come, an exclusive preview of Brick by Brick, an all-access behind-the-scenes web series about your Golden Gophers.